Welcome to Portals of Perception, where we skate to the edge of what we know, to discover and appreciate a new, what's arising in the human experience. Today, in this first in a series of conversations, of contemplative, collective explorations, all within the portal of becoming human, today we are exploring the idea of the human orchestra, discovering the human orchestra. And we sense into the significance of what that means, that we are not just one thing, but many things in one. And we thread into it from the interior experience to the exterior experience in the philosophical and the metaphysical and the spiritual, all the way to the practical and the relational. And we weave those experiences as part of an experiment of discovering how we sense into this prospect and possibility today. So let me start by asking you what comes alive for you when you hear the words human orchestra, specifically discovering the human orchestra. Uh, I'll oh, jump in. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rita, please, please, Rita, go. Thank you. <laughs> well, I couldn't not respond because what happened when I read the title of this conversation was I literally felt everything in me come alive with this joyous excitement. And it was very actually physically feelable. And I thought, wow, is that my orchestra responding to something that uh, they find promoting something that they love, something that they feel harmonious with? And um, I've actually been thinking about the cells and how differently the cells will respond when we are with something that we absolutely love to, let's say, if we're having to deal with something that we find distasteful or distressing. So it's actually got me observing myself in a very different way, a bit like being backstage, listening to an orchestra practicing, which is quite exciting. Uh, so now doubly so, uh, both Aviv and Rita remarking on cellular formation as uh, part of the entry into the subject. Uh, just last night, I was looking at the order of magnitude comparing things of size. And it happens to be that a virus is the smallest form of life, kind of even right on the edge. And the human is seven magnitudes larger. So when you're talking of trillions of cells, the, the attempt in what I was reading was to go, well, if you take a virus and you multiply it set 10 times, and then you multiply it 10 times in size again, and 10 times in size again, seven times, then you get the size of the human. And curiously, if you then take the human and magnify it 10 times, and then 10 times and sevenfold again, you get about the size of a planet, one of the gas giants. And I'm struck by, at that very minuscule level, there's a fine and elegant orientation of particles with one another. And then at the human level, there's a fine and elegant orientation and interaction within us. And then you go to the next magnitude larger or the, the next level at planets. And again, so I feel as though we are an orchestra within a larger orchestra. Hello, uh, I could jump in here. Please. Hi. I have to say, Aviv, I, I had a lot of fun with this. When, when I started thinking about um, the human as an orchestra. Um, so, because when you picture an orchestra, a real orchestra, you have big instruments, you have small instruments, and you have every sort of kind of sound imaginable coming together somehow, and they play a symphony. 
And so I started looking at myself and I said, okay, if I'm an orchestra, what is in this orchestra? So I have a brain, I have a spirit, I have a soul, I have feelings, I have a family, I have memories, I have a history. So I started thinking about all of the things that comprise sort of my life that in a sense have their own little lives and, and they take a lot of time and consideration. And all of these things coming together could be seen as an orchestra. And then I had to write really fast. I had to look at, well, orchestras, how do they play together? Um, they have a conductor. And so I started thinking right away, okay, so what or who is conducting uh, this orchestra of Patrick? At any given moment, is there a conductor? Is there something or someone <laughs> trying to bring order to all these different parts of me um, so that they can actually be coherent and make some kind of a, uh, a coherent noise? And then if you go a little bit beyond that, so you have orchestras and conductors, and what orchestras do is they bring life to um, a symphony. And so orchestras need something to play, otherwise they're just all these parts sitting there sort of waiting for something to do. So I really started thinking about symphonies. And what is a symphony? If you are a human orchestra, you know, what is the symphony in your life that you want to follow and give expression to and, and really bring to life. And I guess I started thinking about, well, what is a symphony? And if you're a person, would a symphony, is one way of looking at that being, if you have a purpose in your life, you've chosen a particular path or a particular purpose, could that then be thought of as the symphony that you are trying to give life to? right? And give expression to and, and put in into the world. And how do you, where does the symphony come from? How do you listen for the symphony of what you want your life to do it to be? You know, who writes it? Where does it come from? How do you listen to the deeper parts of you to maybe find out what the symphony of this human orchestra is? And then where it really got a little bit fun is when I went back to the um, orchestra I said, okay, so orchestras have, um, they have woodwinds, they have percussion, they have strings. So what are my, what are my strings? What's my percussion? Where are my woodwinds? What would they be? You know, my feelings, my feeling life, my emotion life, is that the strings? And if you're trying to write a symphony, you have to have all of these different parts. So how do you start integrating your feeling life, with your thinking and your energy and bring all these things together in a way that um, something can conduct what all this is um, against the score and orchestra and actually make sense of it and actually bring something to life. So that was the kind of run I was thinking and all the visualization that was coming up when I was thinking about uh, the human orchestra. We are already playing here as an orchestra where the themes are intertwinings and, and weaving. Who wants to come on this next? Uh, I would like to take it up from where Patrick uh, left. And uh, it's interesting, Patrick, because I had a very similar uh, images, having myself uh, being a chorister in uh, live performances with very big symphonic orchestras and uh, choirs. So really when you experience uh, this pandemonium that happens when the orchestra is playing full blast and you really feel the uniqueness of each instrument playing together, um, you really realize the interplay and the importance and the value of every instrument in an orchestra. Um, also to say that an orchestra, a symphonic orchestra or philharmonic orchestra in the Western world is uh, usually employs about uh, 70 to 100 musicians. And um, what defines the melody or the, let's say the essence of the orchestra is usually the string section. 
the street section is comprised uh, with the violins, the first violins that play the main melody. So we can say that maybe this is, as you said, the purpose, the, the short term or the long term purpose, or the purpose that is evolving and is, uh, we are finding it on the way. Then there are the second violins that uh, are playing a counter melody, uh, also supporting in a way or framing the melody of the first violins. And maybe we could say that this is our choices and our ideas. Um, then there are uh, the violas, which has a, a bit bigger violins. They have a bit lower pitch and they play a rhythmic uh, uh, support to the melody. So uh, we could say that this is um, uh, the actions and the habits that support the purpose that we do. Then there is uh, the cellos. The cellos, they resemble very much the human voice uh, and they have a very warm sound and uh, they are very expressive. Uh, so we can say that this is the feeling and emotions that give depth and color and dress the melody of our life, the purpose. And finally, behind, we have the bass, bass uh, behind the cellos. Uh, and they really have a bass, you know, low, low tone that keeps the ground and that gives uh, support and substance. And it's like the, the line, let's say, it could be the line of our standards, of our set limits, of our decisions and principles that uphold our purpose. And what the conductor does, because I, I had the privilege to, to meet some very interesting conductors, very charismatic, and, uh, you know, sometimes I rate them. <laughs> so, uh, uh, being a chorus there myself. So, what I find out, that the conductor really unites the ensemble, and he, he gives um, the tempo and also he gives the, uh, she, he, he shapes the sound of the ensemble. Uh, but a good conductor is not uh, in the show. Uh, the good conductor is the one that really has effective rehearsals, is the one that strategizes what the musicians will learn and um, uh, has a very uh, specific um, uh, targets that are achievable. And he, it's, he's the one that really manages to, to take out from, from the musicians, the artistic talent, uh, the, sh the shared responsibility, uh, the discipline, the technical efficiency. Basically, he, he engenders a, a, an ecology of trust and an ecology uh, of inspiration and um, the discipline also. So I was thinking, you know, what is the life in us? What is that life? Is it our soul? Is it our spirit? Basically, who are we? If we are many lives, who are we? Are we the music scores? Are we the mosaic of uh, sounds or are we what is left behind as an impact after the instruments have silenced? So let's see where we are. Rita got us started with the spontaneous registration at the cellular and the human experiential level of the sense of that we are an orchestra in the way you even experience the invitation to participate in this exploration. And then Bernie, expanded us to the universe and beyond and the relative sizes of the virus and the human and planets and beyond. And then Patrick accelerated us into the registration of the many lives, the many parts of the orchestra, which Kiriakina builds with even higher levels um, of sophistication, one layer upon another layer, upon another layer. So let me ask, because we are making here rapid leaps, and I want to ask still 
the even more foundational question to bring additional angles to that question, which is number one, what is for you the evidence that the human is not a solo instrument, but rather a full orchestra when we've, we already have some very good answers to that, but we're interested in whatever additional answers we have. And secondly, why is it important? Why is it important to recognize that the human is an orchestra? In other words, how is this insight and awareness changing the way you treat yourself or your fellow humans when you recognize that the human is an orchestra? Please, who wants to, uh, Mona, you want to come on it next, please. Um, I had I had thoughts that were echoed very much what everybody's been saying, but took a slightly different path into it. And I think some of that might might address what you just brought up. So I was I was thinking as I was watching a movie the other day. I, I was a, a movie I had on, and I I noticed that I was really smiling. And, and I started wondering what it was I was smiling at. So I started realizing that there was just a, a very simple theme of, of a kind of a, an innocence, you know, in, in the movie, like everything happened right and no big bad consequences and not too much anchor in reality and everything worked out. So it was one of those warm, fuzzy, everything nice feeling kind of movies. And so I noticed myself smiling at it. And then I wondered what it was in me that was smiling at whatever it was in in that movie. So I started to think from that aspect of there's something there's something in me that recognizes something in the world around me and has a reaction to it. And from there, it started to build a couple different ways. And one is that I think in the discovery process, a human being really just needs to look at the different reactions that that they have. You know, you go through life and and you have a, a reaction to something you see or you think a certain thing or or you feel a certain way. And every single one of those pieces is something else, a part of you that has a response to the world around you. So right there and just looking at what it is your life is like as you go through during the day, it should tell you that there are a lot of things in there. There's there's a lot of things happening. And I started thinking about what it was that I registered in, in, in that movie. And it was just this simple sense of kind of an innocence. And I thought, well, you know, it's making me smile. So what is it in the experience of life that, makes such a difference between, you know, seeing a kind of a warm, fuzzy movie and experiencing life and and doing something of value with life. And so I started thinking, well, as you grow up, um, as you go through life, you start to experience more, you gain awareness, you add that into the picture, you gain the ability to reason, um, you you gain memory and, and ways to balance things, you You learn about what different feelings mean. You learn interactions with people. You accumulate history. And then I started to think, you know, really, that is very much like all of the different pieces that come together in an orchestra to then make a different, a more unified response or a response, a noise, (laughs) you know, active back, um, a reaction. And then I thought, well, you know, if you think about an orchestra, you have a lot of pieces there and they have a flat score in front of them. And it's like, there's all the elements of, of, of life happening, already described, already there, written on the paper. And your assembly as a musician plays that. So it's reactive in a way. It's, it's a reaction to something that's in front of you. And it's nice when all the pieces react together or react toward a good, uh, a good result. Um, and even, 
even if the composer were to change some notes, you still react to that and how you play the instrument. Even if the conductor was to wave his wand differently and emphasize a different section, you still are reacting to something. So when I started thinking about the human as an orchestra, I started thinking, you know, there is a, a very special trait to the human. And it's more like we have the ability in what we assemble as, as, as the whole of us or the orchestra of us, we have the ability to react spontaneously. So it's like the notes on that score are morphing as you're watching and you're able to then put together out of the intelligence in you something that responds to that. And even more than that, you're able to then, in how you respond, you're able to influence what notes appear on that score. So there's something very special about the human orchestra. And so from there, it was, it, it was into the importance aspect. And, and that importance aspect is a little bit like people were talking about the conductor inside. So when, when you abdicate that that conductor role to only reacting to the outside and the world changes as much as it changes and you go through life and you don't have that unifying conductor, then you get all the noises that the orchestra makes is like a chaotic din and you don't have something that blends and changes and grows and, and can express you know, green moving into yellow, into blue, and, and you know, all of the, the fractal type of life we have without having taken um, your opportunity at life to, to, grow, to grow that conductor role inside so that you have a unifying principle towards something that, that you want your life to stand for. So I think the importance of, of um, of seeing yourself as an orchestra, but seeing your role in a bigger sense really makes the difference in, in, in terms of, of a life that, you know, can hold together toward, towards something that, you know, um, that fits your principles and your goals instead of dissemble into chaotic noise. I think that the two voices that are waiting to come in are the, the professional musician and the semi-professional musician, they waited patiently, so please. And it's, it's really curious because, Mona, you just touched on the colors because it's so curious that my first inroad to this wasn't at all musical uh, or didn't kind of uh, draw on, on, on the direct sort of orchestral, symphonic references, but really... I had to go really simple at first because I, whenever I've thought about this fact that the human is not just one thing, there's this knowing about it and the knowing of the importance of, of knowing blah, that there are many parts and the importance of knowing what I identify with. Um, but where it threw me had to do with being able to really recognize it and recognizing these lives inside that are slow and that are fast, the adventurer and the homebody. Like I just went on this whole path of trying to almost find these very opposing influences in me that, and maybe that links to the, the whole thing about do I then identify with any one of them or do I simply recognize that they are there? And who gets to decide in the moment? Um, and just uh, uh, perhaps a jump again from there to something to do with, in a way, almost this counterproductivity to the fact that the human is this amazing, capable, multifaceted, uh, fermenting vessel, in a way, that what a shame it would be 
if it was identified and, and in a way taken down to being one thing. It's like having this whole palette of colors and only one big brush. And every time you dip it in the water of life and you run it across the colors, all you get is brown. <laughs> but there are all the colors and each of the colors also has perhaps a smoothness or a grittiness. So realizing that they are all there, all these different aspects allows you also to reach down into the toolbox and find the smaller tools that allow each of those to step out and do their job um, with great accuracy. And sometimes together, again, just what's needed to express or or be with what that moment um, calls for or calls out of you. Yeah, that, that was great. Um, it's, yeah, it's a similar thing. My, my mindset didn't really go to uh, the musical um, ref context of it. It went to uh, the, first of all, the multiplicity contemplation. And the way that turned up was I was uh, working the other day on this project and I was starting to get annoyed with myself because I kept on having to go back to the van to get some other tool or piece of pipe, something, fitting, whatever. And I was like, God, and I was starting to complain. I thought, oh man, I got, there's 10,000 moving parts with this project. And I, I just can't seem to keep them all in my head. And it's, I was really getting aggravated. And then I thought about, the human orchestra and I said well it's not your job to keep it all in your head there's not another kind of contemplation that's not you have system you have a multiple system as people have spoken about um and it the and it does and it's designed to actually handle a multiple situation me trying to handle the multiple situation is so it's not going to work so good now and that's kind of what i was experiencing the other day so one important feature i think in this of um, uh, why is it important um and i'll take something out of a uh, dog training evidently uh, when a dog jumps up on you it doesn't know who the alpha is and because dogs, like other animals, are uh, pack creatures, and they work together as a team when they know who is the alpha. Uh, and when they jump up on you, they're not, they're not sure. And so they don't know what their place is. And I see that in a way when something gets all mixed up, it turns, it gets sort of the brown color as Aud was mentioning. Uh, the other day, I think I left a wrench on a table or a sock or something. And my wife said, is that you? And I said, no, it's a sock. It's not me. And I mean, how many times you get, you hear somebody say, oh, they're driving and then they got bumped by somebody go, oh, they hit me. No, they hit your car. They didn't hit you. Or you read an article or something, or you say something stupid, and someone said, instead of saying, well, that's a stupid thing to say, they say, well, you are stupid. I say, no. I might say dumb stuff. That doesn't mean I'm dumb. And, and so... What I see the importance of this is that it's kind of like finding, learning A, as the captain of the ship, you don't go down into the boiler room and tell the boiler operator how, um, what the pressure should be, what the steam pressure should be. All your job is to direct a thing. You can't, I mean, what, what did you say? 32 trillion cells? For uh, an average weight man of 70 kilograms, I think it's about 154 pounds average. 
Uh, I mean, there's no way you're meant to, we're not meant to manage all that stuff. And uh, that's kind of where I'm like, where the importance I think of this contemplation is, is to, okay, uh, learning how not to be such a annoying micromanager on the processes, 